Mikey Gotts for CanadianAwareness.org at Conspiracy Culture, uh, where we just heard a presentation from Brian O'Day, uh, one of the biggest Canadian pot smugglers who faced some jail time for his actions, um, got into a lot of interesting stuff. But here's some footage of some stories that are not in his book about um, CIA and different extensions of government uh, being involved with uh, drug smuggling and drug trafficking. Okay, I'll tell you a story tonight that's not in the book. Um, I didn't put it in the book because I was afraid I would get killed. But I don't think I will today because I've seen people tell other stories. I mean, Glenn Greenwald is still alive, so I figure I'm probably okay. Um, we did a deal one time, and we went to Southeast Asia and picked up a load of Thai. And it actually came, most of the Thai pot, the call of Thai pot, comes from Vietnam. Um, but, and we dealt with the Vietnamese military, was who supplied it. Um, and we brought, when we got over there to pick up the load, they said, we want you to take two people back with you. And we said, absolutely not. We're not putting any strangers on our boat. And they said, okay, you're not getting the pot. So eventually they convinced us to take these two people. These were not good people, but we, you know, we didn't know who they were. They seemed like us, but we didn't know who they were. So we had a meeting amongst ourselves about them and decided we were going to change the offload from where everybody else knew it was going. And we moved it to Santa Barbara, and actually we pull the boat right off Santa Barbara and we used Zodiacs and we just ran that ship right onto the beach in the back of pickup trucks. It was unbelievable. <laughs> the next day we get a phone call and this guy says, who the fuck do you think you are? And it was to my friend Bill and Bill said, well who the fuck are you? He said, you got my fucking pot. And Bill said, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, don't fuck with me. Let me tell you something. Your brother Chris, right now he's sitting at such and such a restaurant in London. If I don't have that pot in my fucking hands by tomorrow, he's dead. And we went, who are you? He said, we're the CIA. And Bill said, right, you're the CIA. He said, listen, buddy, write this phone number down. Bill said, okay, he wrote the number down. He said, go anywhere on the planet and phone that number. Do it. So the next day, Bill and I went out to uh, Canaan Dune exit off the Ventura Freeway in Los Angeles. In those days, it wasn't cell phones. There were no cell phones. And um, Canaan Road was where trucks went off often. And there were like a 100 phone booths, banks of phone booths. <coughs> so we went out there, and we phoned that number. And the person said, Langley. And we went right away. <laughs> sure. So we asked for the extension, and the guy picked up the phone, and he said, Bill, hang on a second. So Bill's holding on the phone, and within 10 seconds, the phone next to him starts to ring. And the guy comes back on the line, he said, tell your buddy to pick up the phone. And I picked up the phone, and it was him. So we believed him. <laughs> and uh, he said, here's how it's going to work. You're going to take $3 million tomorrow, and you're going to go to the Sikh temple on Robertson Boulevard in Los Angeles. You're going to walk into that temple, and there's an altar. You'll see it in there. Just go put the suitcases there and leave, and we'll be done. And so the next day, we hop in the car. He hopped in the car with the money. I hopped in a taxi cab with the camera because I'm going to shoot this thing because I'm not going to have these guys say we didn't go and if whatever, whatever. So he goes down and he gets out of the car. I'm parked back by this park and I get out and I'm like being a tourist, taking pictures. <laughs> Next thing, two guys standing in the front of the temple notice me and see what I'm doing and they come straight for me. So I jumped in this taxi and I said, just fucking drive, just go. And the guy said, I've been waiting my whole life for this. <laughs> and we drove up into Beverly Hills and you know, I had to drive around and around and finally I jumped out of the car and started to run through buildings and lost them. So that was that. 
One other story, we were up in uh, Dutch Harbor. If you're not a fisherman, then you got no business being in Dutch Harbor. It is in the middle of nowhere, and you can't get there from anywhere. So there are these two guys sitting over there. We're in the Folksal Bar, and they got baseball caps and nice clean shirts and, and clean boots and shit, and they're not fishermen. And they come over and sit with us and say, we'd like to make a proposal to you, a proposition. And we said, what's that? They said, we'd like to offer you the opportunity to take something for us and deliver it to Nicaragua, in return for which we'll give you access to any port in the US, one time only. This was during the Iran-Contra, the, uh, Iran -Contra, the mm -hmm. Sandinista-Contra, that whole George Bush senior fiasco. They wanted us to run guns into Nicaragua. They were obviously the CIA or somebody like that. But we told them they had the wrong guys and we took off. So that was the other time that I nearly did something with the CIA.